Warhawk Beyond 2040 and welcome to the first edition of a brand new review series where I am going to be talking about The Flash Season 8 and today I am going to be talking about Episode 1, the Season 8 premiere of the show, Armageddon Part 1, which is part of a five-part crossover event of the same name and each part we are going to see The Flash team up with a different hero from the Arrowverse and it's a very similar formula to what Superman the Animated Series and Spider-Man used to follow back in the 1990s where Superman and Spider-Man would team up with a hero from the DC and Marvel Universe respectively and it's kind of cool to see The Flash follow that trend. So for Armageddon Part 1, The Flash teamed up with The Atom aka Ray Palmer played superbly as always by the returning Brandon Wolf, who has been a mainstay of the Arrowverse since its inception near enough going all the way back to season three of Arrow and Brandon Wolf was a mainstay of Legends of Tomorrow for most of the show's run before leaving in season five so it was great to have Brandon Wolf back it was like he never left. I still prefer him as Superman a lot more because Brandon Wolf is still to this day my favourite Superman of all time. But it was great to see him back being the goofy scientific nerd Ray Palmer that we all know and love. But the thing with Ray Palmer this time round, as opposed to all of his other appearances, he was still that scientific goofball, but he was a lot more calmer and a lot more serious, kind of like how he was in his early appearances back in the Arrow days. So it was great to see him working with The Flash once again. And, you know, I love seeing Brandon Wolf. You know, I never get tired of seeing him. It's always a pleasure to have him in any capacity, whether he's playing Superman or whether he's playing the Atom. You know, I just love seeing the guy. I think he's an amazing actor and a really cool dude. I have to point that out that he's a really nice guy and someone that I would definitely like to meet one day at a comic con but anyway Armageddon part one got off to a very interesting start and unlike previous openings where you would always have an evil speedster running around or maybe the premiere picks up where we left off at the end of I don't know for example season five or season four anything like that we got a little taste of what the future could hold for the Flash because we were treated to an appearance from a villain called Desperado who, for those of you who are not that familiar with that name, Desperado is an old villain who appeared in the first issue of the Justice League back in October 1960 and there's been a number of different versions of this villain he comes from the future and he is trying to stop the flash from ending the world in 2031 so interesting way to kick off this armageddon crossover event with part one having barry possibly trying to end the world which is something i don't think has been explored much you know the possibility of barry allen becoming a villain and destroying the world that's usually something you would see with Superman so to have the Flash possibly become a villain is a very interesting concept and something that I've been wanting the show to explore for quite a long time ever since the show started back in 2014 so you know this was a very good way to kick things off and we basically see this guy trying to kill the flash so most of this episode was despero trying to stop the flash from ending the world with ray palmer's help good stuff here one of the more enjoyable episodes of the flash's run because i know some fans even i've said this myself that somewhere along the way the flash has kind of lost its edge a little bit the magic's not been there but i think with the armageddon crossover events with part one i definitely think they're on their way to recapturing some of that classic magic that we all know and love and armageddon part one loved it really looking forward to part two 
which we'll get into in a moment. So with that all said, let's get straight into it. Let's talk about episode one, the season eight premiere, Armageddon part one. So we kick off part one of the Armageddon crossover events with Central City 2031, where there is chaos in the street and a sign that is graffitied all around saying the end is nigh. And we then see Despero shows up and notes that he can stop this before it even happens and activates his belt and disappears. We then cut to the presence where we see in Central City, Caitlin and Barry walk to get coffee. And we learn that Frost is still away, pining over Chilibane. Caitlin says she's ready to start dating again, but they get an alert of an impending train disaster. We then see Barry speeds off to save lives of those on the train before speeding back to have his coffee. We then learn that Barry is more than fast than before. He's leveled up. So what I've liked about the Flash's run is that from the very beginning all the way up to now, the Flash's speed has got faster and faster. We saw in a good portion of season one, he was mentored by Harrison Wells, aka Eobard Form, to get faster. So I truly believe before the show wraps up for good, whether that's season eight or even season nine, depending on how many we go up to, I believe we will see Barry Allen become the iconic fastest man alive that we all know and love because he is getting faster, which makes a lot of sense. So to see him increasing his speed, getting more confidence and having that jokey, comedic, cocky attitude that we all know and love with the Flash, you know, is a really cool thing. So it's looking like season eight, we are going to see a much more comic book accurate version of the Flash. So we then see at The Citizen, Iris has a podcast and is interviewing Kramer, who's had a huge change of heart about metahumans since her experience back in season seven. The Citizen has leveled up too, as we see CC Citizen Media moving to a building owned by Sue Dearborn. Iris promotes Allegra to supervising editor, and at that home later that night, Barry and Iris have a romantic dinner and plan to relax when they get a knock at the door. And it's none other than Ray Palmer himself. We learn that Ray Palmer is in Central City for a tech conference and needs somewhere to stay. At the Mercury Labs, we see a group of villains, none other than the Royal Flash Gang, shows up to steal a piece of technology, which they manage to do very easily. Now, for those of you who know the Royal Flash Gang, the Royal Flash Gang are an old group of villains who appeared in the Justice League comics back in the 1960s as well. And they've been around for a really long time. They were a huge part of the DCAU. They appeared in one episode of the Justice League. And they were a huge part of Batman Beyond as they were one of the main heavy hitters of that show. So to actually see the Royal Flash game in the Arrowverse was a nice treat because I don't think we've ever seen them appear in the, any of the Arrowverse shows. Although they were one member short, which was Ace, I like what they did with King. They've made him a combination of King and Ace. So he's the big guy muscle of the team but he also has a personality and he's very arrogant just like King is but what I also liked about this version of Raw Flash Gang unlike the version in Batman Beyond which is still cool they weren't your group of blue-blooded aristocratic snobs like they were in Beyond the Raw Flash Gang in The Flash they were just like a group of street punks dressed up in spades colors you know so i thought that was kind of cool and seeing them constantly throwing puns about playing cards was was a nice treat so i'd love to see the raw flush game come back i think you know they were definitely one of the highlights of this episode or part one of the crossover event so we see ray makes barry and iris healthy juice and fills them in on how the legends are getting on and he sort of reveals that he doesn't talk to them much anymore as he's now deep into his research as he's trying to balance his life out. They then get another knock at the door and we see it's Chester who fanboys about Ray Palmer and his technology. 
Barry leaves and goes to investigate the military lab spiff. Kramer is struggling with the dismantling of the Meta's task force as well as dealing with her own newfound powers. As for Citizen, Allegra gets pushed back from her staff even when she gives him a direct order on what to cover. And we see, as for Lab, Barry thinks the train incident and the Mercury Labs incident may be connected and it turns out that they are. And then we see at Einheit's prison they lose power and inmates almost escape but Barry discovers that the Royal Flush game was behind the breakout. We then see Ray and Chester gets coffee. Chester has some big ideas for Ray, but Ray isn't necessarily on board with some of Chester's plans as he doesn't want to start another tech business. He reveals that he wants a more balanced life and that's why he hasn't put on the atom suit in a long time. So basically what we've learned is after Ray left in season five of Legends of Tomorrow, Ray Palmer has more or less retired from being a hero, so he's concentrating more on being a scientist again. With NC Chester, very embarrassed, leaves, and at the conference, Iris catches up with Allegra, who tells her about what's happened. Iris says she can handle it. It turns out that the Royal Flush Gang took a Pacific prisoner, and Chester is being hard on himself, and the Flash suggests that the Royal Flush Gang hasn't actually changed their MO, and now that Team Flash has a lead. Looks like they're stealing things to run a massive computer for a massive heist. Once the heist begins, the Flash shows up to stop the game and he enters Flash time and stops them. Now this was kind of cool because obviously Flash has been getting more faster. So the way he was able to stop time and just take out the Royal Flash game was really cool. And it kind of reminded me of what the Flash would do in the Justice League cartoon. You know, just knocking out villains with a big smile on his face. You know, I love that. You know, I'm really liking what they're doing with the Flash in season eight. We then see Ray and Barry talk about what's happened with Chester. Ray says he doesn't want to fall back into the trap, but Barry gives him advice about learning to take time out and encourages him to build something new. In his interview, Ray admits that he's not sure what he plans to do next, but he wants them all to find out together next year. As the citizen, Allegra hands out brutal edits to her staff members and then tells them they need to do better about incorporating the voices of the people. We then see Despero shows up at the technology conference and makes everyone flee before asking the Flash to show himself. Despero says he's going to kill him and then we see Ray runs to suit up as the Flash while the Flash faces off with Despero. Even together they're not much of a match as Despero can mess with their minds. The Flash tries to find out why Despero is after him so Despero shows him the bleak future, a coming Armageddon a decade from now that the Flash causes. This is enough of a distraction for Ray to stop Despero. At Star Labs, they debrief about what Despero showed the Flash, and Caitlin confirms that Despero was telling the tr truth about the future. Ray suggests that they have to figure out what kind of alien Despero is, so Caitlin calls Alex in National City. Nice. So I think the next episode we're going to see Alex Danvers appear, so I like that. Cool to see a Supergirl character showed up in the flash so this should be a lot of fun ray tells chester he's creating a non-profit organization named after chester's father to support young scientists and inventors before ray palmer leaves he gives him a word of advice show despero who he really is so towards the end we see despero shows up at star labs so that the flash can show him who he really is Despero scans Barry's mind to see who he really is and realises that Barry is telling the truth about being honourable, but he still can't risk the future. Barry then reveals his true identity to Despero to convince him to prove that he is not the villain he will become in the future. Despero gives Barry seven days to fully convince him, and if he doesn't, Despero will kill him. And that wraps up Armageddon Part 1 and my review. Excellent episode. A lot of fun, starting to feel that old flash magic that we all know and love, and Barry becoming more and more like the comic book accurate version of the Flash character. Loved it. Great seeing him and the Atom working together. Great to see Brandon Wolf back as always. Hope we do see him again. But overall, this was a very good, strong opener for the armageddon five parts crossover events and you know i'm really looking forward to part two where we are going to see alex danvers 
team up with the flash and you know it's not really a dynamic that's been explored a lot so i'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to work and we're off to a great start i love this episode a lot and you know the idea of barry allen possibly causing the end of the world is intriguing and i'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out over the course of this five part crossover event so that's going to be it for me i am going to wrap this up now what was your thoughts on Armageddon Part 1? Did you enjoy it? How did you feel seeing Ray Palmer back? Was it great seeing him and the Flash teaming up again? And also, how do you think Barry will cause the end of the world? What does it mean? What actually happens leading up to 2031? And also, what kind of role do you think Alex Danvers is going to play in this crossover event when we come to Part 2? You know what to do, guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your thoughts and comments down below, and I will see all of you next time for another edition of the Flash Season 8 review series, where I am going to be talking about Episode 2, Armageddon Part 2, which I am really looking forward to talking about, especially with the way this episode ended with Despero threatening Barry that unless he has seven days to prove himself, he will kill him. Great way to end it. Really looking forward to seeing how episode two is going to play out, which is part two of the Armageddon crossover event. So should be a lot of fun. So until next time, take care, everybody, and stay safe. And once again, thanks for listening.